of ethics, AI, big data is one that is going to become intensely political and one which will become a predominant issue that we are going to be discussing for a long time from here on in. Because there you have this utterly transformative technology, which I think is going to change the economy, it's going to change the labor market, it's actually going to change the framework of society. So the question about how do you apply this technology in a way or way that's fair, safe and ethical is just going to be, like I say, a dominant political issue. You and I will be able to and can already ask the computer questions by typing it on our phone or on our keyboard and um, along comes the answer. You and I can ask the computer to code something for you and we can ask it in natural language um type it in and out comes the answer so it's a hugely powerful and and hugely um transformative technology i think artificial intelligence will shape the future of work in that one two punch the first one making our existing stuff much more efficient and allowing us to drive skilled people up the value chain and then the second one opening up these whole new scenarios that you know we, we haven't had space to even think about yet the future is actually going to change considerably. We're now going to be using uh, chatbots uh, and AI interfaces as the first point of contact between a doctor and patient to allow better triage, for example. We're then using AI for diagnostic purposes to allow you to uh, diagnose on a chest X-ray or CT scan very quickly uh, for a patient. We're also seeing navigation using CT MRIs to allow you to either perform a surgical operation or indeed navigate through a biopsy or indeed through a uh, headset allowing you to reshape and look at a 3D model of, uh, for example, anatomy. So AI has certainly been very much part and parcel of who we are at the moment and will aim and disrupt our healthcare going forward. Generative AI, I do think is a game changer. I'm, I'm really shocked when you know, some people quite you know, senior and technology, let's say, aware uh, people even uh, debate, oh, is this a hype or something? I'm, I must say I'm quite surprised. Billions would not have been invested and the, you know, industries wouldn't have been disrupted or transformed within months, not even a year, uh, if this technology was not powerful and impactful. So generative AI is, I, I think, just beginning. That's absolutely very exciting. What I would like to see is ethical implementation of AI within the creative sector and it being used as a hybrid solution uh, with humans to, to enhance productivity and to enable us as a sector to kind of take away some of the, the more admin tasks and, and to enhance the user experience without cutting so many jobs. I think it actually can be a job creator, um, certainly when it comes to data science, as I can see a, a big a big need in the sector for, for more data scientists. Um, if you look at the quality of the data generally in the media and entertainment industry, there's a lot of, of data normalization needs to happen, data cleaning, um, and that will inevitably create jobs in the sector too. Introduction of generative AI should start with very clear objectives. Uh, knowing what you want to achieve, uh, basically in the space. Um, first step is gonna be educating the entire organization and company, uh, especially high level executives, just making sure that they are on board um, and understand how generative AI can make the daily jobs of the entire company, every single engineer, a lot easier and more efficient. AI is not the big shiny robot coming and taking all of our jobs. It's reshaping the world of work, the world of business. It's changing the world. It can be used for great good and you can't afford to ignore it anymore. And what I do is delve into the particular industry sector and really tailor my material. You should always invest in change because what you often find is these aren't technology transformations or algorithms or models. 
these are effectively people transformations. So if there's one thing you absolutely should be doing is really think about and invest in change. How do you bring about that cultural change in the organization? How do you get other leaders that perhaps don't know data and artificial intelligence to really embrace the opportunity? And what AI allows us to become, what AI is essentially down the line, is a ruthless optimizer of everything we do, both personally, personal AIs, and in corporates and organizations organization or the corporate AI, eventually those two are going to talk to each other and hopefully in those communications, this is why the website and SEO might go away uh, because AIs will talk to AIs and we'll have to go and trawl over websites. But eventually, even bias out of purchasing will go away. There's so many other ethical considerations that you that, that need to be considered when using um, machine learning um, models and applications. And they're all unique to, to different use cases and modalities. For instance, if you're using computer vision, that's gonna have a different challenge from large language models or from robotics um, so, or predictive analysis. So again, it's it's really important to educate yourself. I do say knowledge is, knowledge is power, knowledge is wealth. I mean, I didn't come up with that statement. It's, it's, it's out there and everybody knows it. But um, with AI, especially with the advance and the increased adoption of AI across the world today, and there's so many ethical considerations that are so important, not just to certain people in society, but to everyone. Businesses that implement AI efficiently can expect up to two times growth in the certain key performance area over those that don't do this. AI isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. Think of it as electricity of the 21st century. Either you drive with, with AI or you get driven out of the market. So remember, every byte of data you ignore, someone else is turning into a dollar. I guess what I'm excited about is being able to use AI to remove friction from how we create and disseminate goods, food, healthcare, education, nutrition, uh, energy to bring the cost of those goods down so cheaply that they become abundant. Uh, so imagine being born into a world where you don't have to worry about working to pay for food. It's all there, it's all free. But of course, these technologies can be weaponized. Uh, we could potentially create uh, a, a post-truth world. We could have mass technological employment. We can create surveillance capitalism or even a super intelligence. So we have to make sure that we're using these technologies to make the world better and not uh, walking into some of these risks over the next few decades. So. Legislation is one of the big questions when it comes to AI. How do we go about making sure that this technology's benefits are felt by all and they're felt fairly, but also that we counter the harms and make it as difficult as possible to misuse these technologies? There are systems of thinking together, like science, that do work, and those that don't work, like traditional politics. And so AI is actually going to play a big role in mediating many-to-many -many collaboration so that we can collectively think effectively together and do solve some of these problems that we need to solve, like climate change and so on, that are based on mass delusion. You know, we need to be able to think better together and then we can start addressing these problems.